Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've done any kind of video other than just the little clip from our vacation. We're back home now. We had a good time. Got to sit on the back deck of the cabin and watch the wind blow through the trees quite a bit, which was very relaxing. Uh, we didn't make it up to Clingman's Dome or Newfound Gap. Uh, we went up there going to Cherokee with the intentions of stopping, but you would have thought they were giving away free money with all the people that were up there. And we decided not to stop at either place. It was just way, way too crowded. And believe it or not, people weren't wearing their masks. So we skipped both of those and just went on over into Cherokee. Hopefully you've seen the video that I posted and got to see the bamboo forest that I spoke about. Um, that aside, great trip. Glad to be home. Uh, another little thing to talk about. I have broke 200 subscribers. The one thing that keeps, I think, being brought up, which affects me not having more, is the fact that when I started this channel, I didn't have any place to do anything outside. I had that one piece of property. I went and shot the one video over there. And then, welcome to Kentucky. It went from spring to being hotter than hell in the middle of July. And stayed that way all summer. Well, it has finally broke and it has cooled down a lot here. And now that things have cooled back down and are pleasant to be outside, by pleasant, I mean in the 70s with little to no humidity. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get over there and get some stuff done. I've actually got a plan on what I'm wanting to do. and We'll go through that at a different date. But uh, no trip to Tennessee is complete without making a stop at Smoky Mountain Knife Works to drool over everything you wish you had the money to buy. And this trip was no different. <clears throat> but the thing that surprised me with this trip is once we got there, my wife informed me that she had saved up some money for me to spend at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. That is always a plus. You gotta love a woman who feeds your knife addiction. But while we were there, I picked up a few odd and ends, and I'll start with some of the easier stuff to start out with. One of the things I picked up was the Lansky eraser block. The reason I picked this up is this is a cleaning block for cleaning knives. If you have a knife, and just so you can see, it's flexible. It's got a little bit of grit to it, but not much. And it's kind of like a modified pencil eraser, for lack of a better way of putting it. But the main thing this does is it will take scuffs, rust, and stuff like that off of a carbon steel knife blade. Everyone knows I like SE knives. Everyone knows that a lot of them, the finishes come off of them, and I've patinaed them. They still will rust. And with 1095, it's always nice to have something to clean that rust off of the blade. Um, right now, I don't have anything that needs it, but down the road, if I get something that gets a little rust on it, I will use that and let you see how well it works. Uh, the other thing I picked up, and I've already taken these out of the package, were Exotech quick fire tabs. These are actually water resistant. Um, they've actually, I've seen videos where Exotac has submerged these, pulled them out, shook the water off of them, fluffed them up, striked them with a ferro rod. Uh, I picked up a 12 pack. We'll use, whoa, <laughs> we'll use those at a later date and do some stuff on them. Now, we are going to get to the big surprise that my wife hit me with. Lo and behold, who would have guessed? Another SE knife. I will admit, I've already had this out of the box. I couldn't wait. I got it out and piddled with it a little bit yesterday and this morning. But we're going to get into it anyways. 
it's packaged. Let you turn it around here. Typical SE style, the box, the info on the back of it. Then once you do that, you've got your regular box. Everything's been taken out of the bag and the bags have been pitched. You have your knife, sheath. A lot of these will come. This clip plate is in its own separate bag. I've already went ahead and put that on. Uh, come with the standard SE stickers, the cards, and then the extraction card that comes with it. Set all that aside and we'll get into this knife. I took advantage of this being a new knife and was able to use it today to cut up some onions, peppers, smoked sausage, and used it for lunch. Worked really good with that. That's why it's got a water stain on there. After I got done, I washed everything off because I had grease and stuff on my hands. Uh, typical SE sheath. Here's my SE5. As you can see, same style. This one's just a polished out a little bit more where it's been used some more. Oh, now the knife is the SE Laser Strike. Now, if you notice, the blade's a little different color. I don't know if this is an exclusive to Smoky Mountain Knife Works or not. I know they have a lot of other SE knives that are, but this is a gunmetal smoked gray, so it's not completely black. It's got kind of a gray tint to it. Um, I don't have any SE knives that have the black finish on them. All of them are gone. So I don't have anything really to compare it to. But uh, the laser strike, the thing that really got my attention with this was the blade point. I have really, because of the PR4, come to like that spear point design. I like the shape of the handle on this as well as the choil. It's got some mild jimping here on the back. It's just like all the other SE jimping. It's real deep, but it's not aggressive if that makes sense. I'm not sure on this one whether I'll do any modifications to the finish or anything. I may just let this one wear on its own. Uh, it does come with a bow drill divot on one side, not on both. And there's some other stuff we'll get into with it here in a few minutes after I get over some of this other. The overall length of this knife is 10 inches. It has a blade length of four and three quarter inches. It has a cutting edge of four and a half inches. So that's kind of in between the SE5 and the PR4 that you've seen me do videos on. It's got a real high, I guess you'd call it maybe a saber or almost a full flat grind. I don't know if you can see that little edge right there where it changes, but uh, it's their typical 1095 with the Rowan heat treat. Rockwell is 55 to 57. The blade thickness is 0.188, which is roughly around 3 16 of an inch. Let me get my five out here. If you look at it, overall length between the two, let me get you raised up here just a little bit. There we go. Overall length between the two. The five is, oh, three quarters of an inch longer. If you look at the blade length, there's not much difference in the blade length that's lining the hand, tip of the handles up, maybe a half inch difference. If you look at the cutting edge, same thing on it, about a half inch difference. The difference comes to on the pommel. The five has the big eyelet. This one has an enclosed eyelet for a lanyard. Looking at the PR4, you look at the PR4, you line the handles up. There is a big, big difference in the blade length. It's probably an inch to an inch and a quarter difference in the blade length. Now, when you line the cutting edges up, you're looking at maybe, oh, 
three quarters of an inch difference in it and of course the overall length you can tell a big difference in that most of that's due to this chill oh the one thing that i was surprised with on this is this knife has a little hidden hidden feature and if you notice on this little piece of cord that come with it there is a flat steel washer well, the reason that washer is there is so, if you're lucky, you can take that and break these screws in the handle loose. And initially, these things were really, really tight, and I took them apart already and broke them loose. I'm probably going to end up putting two of these on here. That way, if you have an instant instance where you can't get them to break loose you can put one on each side but the hidden surprise in this knife once you get the screws out take the handle scales off it has a area in the handle that's milled out and in that area, you have a combination magnesium ferrule rod that goes in that hollow, as well as two of the Exotech quick fire tabs that are in there as well. I haven't used any of that yet. I don't know if I'm going to. I do know that at some point I'm probably going to glue those screw heads on the opposite side to the handle. That way when you take these two screws out, you don't run the chance of losing these when you put them back together. If I can get them to glue to each other, are glued to the handle I mean sorry then I don't ever have to worry about losing them they'll always stay attached to the handle the one thing that I did find interesting let me get this back together here I was worried that after taking the handles off and then putting the handles back on <laughs> that you might have some alignment issues with the steel, with the round handle. And lo and behold, that hasn't been the case. So the fit and finish on that, when you do that, is impressive. Because once you put it back together, there's almost absolutely no lip or anything around that. The sheath is, like I said earlier, identical to the SE5. It snaps in good. You've got the slide adjustment to really lock it in. I look forward to getting this knife out and using it and seeing how it does. I do like the fact it's a little bit thicker than the PR4, and I like the extra blade length over the PR4. But yet, that being said, the knife itself only weighs just a touch over 9 ounces compared to the SE5, which the knife itself weighs in right at a pound. So you're, <laughs> you're getting increased durability over the PR4, but less weight than an SE5, plus a little shorter blade length. Hope you all have found this interesting. Like, share, subscribe, and things are gonna change this fall on the channel, so just keep coming back. Things are gonna get interesting. Y'all have a good day. See you.